In this video, I'm going to be talking about skills that employers are actually looking for skills that are incredibly valuable. And this is going to be one of those cutesy little listicle style articles or anything like that. This is going to be what employers are looking for. Somebody that has done extensive interviews and has been a manager and hired people and somebody that now owns their own business and has employees. So these are going to be the skills that are actually really valuable that are going to impress hiring managers and employers if you can demonstrate that you have them. And whether you're looking for a new job or you're looking to move roles within your company, company or you just want to get a raise, this list is going to help you. Now, if you appreciate this type of video and you want to see more like it, let me know by gently tapping that like button and also commenting down below. And if you haven't done it already, go ahead, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on videos in the future. All right, so I'm going to start this off with probably the most important skill of all, and that is critical thinking and resourcefulness. So when you are going about your day-to-day -day job, there are going to be problems that pop up. Now, many of these problems are gonna be incredibly simple problems that you can just look up on Google and solve them. Some of them might be a little bit more complicated where maybe you have to go into the company's wiki and look at some manuals or figure it out on your own that way. And then some of them might be complicated enough that you wanna go and ask somebody else for some help. And then some problems can be complicated enough that you really have to put your thinking cap on and you know that it's gonna take a while to solve it. But if you can solve those problems without having to have your boss or the owner of the company solve them for you, you are going to become incredibly valuable. Now, one thing that I've noticed, I've seen this many times, um, and other people have probably seen it as well, especially if they have experience, is people who don't have any work experience just panic whenever a problem pops up, right? They panic, they don't even look on Google, they don't go through the basics of trying to solve the problem themselves, they just panic and they automatically go and ask somebody else. Now, most people, as they get more experience in their career, they figure out how to solve most of the basic and kind of medium level problems. And that's great, that's incredibly valuable, and it's also gonna make it to where you're not super annoying in the workplace. But if you can be one of those people who solves the difficult and the super difficult level problems on your own, that is gonna make you incredibly valuable. So different jobs are gonna have different levels of micromanagement, and if you're in a job that micromanages you a lot, then chances are you're not gonna to get to use your problem solving skills as much. But without a doubt, it's almost always gonna be worth it for you to spend at least a few minutes trying to solve the problem before you go and ask somebody else. And obviously there's gonna be some discernment because you don't wanna to try to solve a problem and then make the problem even worse. So that's all part of problem solving skills as well, is figuring out when you should try to solve it yourself and when you should ask somebody else. And of course, different careers and different businesses that you work for are gonna be completely different depending on what their operating standards are. And by the way, if you don't know what career you wanna go into and you want a free six-step guide that basically boils it down and makes it incredibly easy for you to figure that out, check that out down in the description and I think I'll maybe put it in the pinned comment as well. You will get access to the guide and you'll also get access to my private newsletter where I will send out exclusive information to you. All right, next one on the list is somewhat related related to number one, and that is going to be adaptability. The truth is that careers, businesses, and even entire industries are rapidly changing. Many of them are going through the process of disruption and technology is completely changing the industry. And this is why it's very important that you don't get comfortable and you're always learning more and adapting. I think most people agree that you don't necessarily want to do the same boring, mundane job for 40 years. You probably want to take on more responsibilities, learn new things, and develop yourself professionally as well as a person. And so adaptability is basically learning how to learn. Now, a great way for you to get good at this is to take classes and even get certifications in many cases on courses and websites like Coursera. And Coursera is a great way for you to learn new skills, get certified and get a raise. And in some cases you can actually get a job just from Coursera certifications alone. So definitely check that out. I'll also have that down in the description below. Number three on the list is a pretty obvious one, but it's very, very important. And that is communication. Being able to clearly communicate problems when they pop up, 
clearly communicate what you've done in order to try to solve the problems and communicate exactly what you need from the other person when you're reaching out to them is super important. A lot of the time people are too afraid to do this or maybe they do it but they're passive aggressive about it. And the ability to explain complex ideas in a way that is very clear, concise, and easy to understand is invaluable. I don't think I need to go on too much about this when I think everybody knows that communication is incredibly important. Number four on the list is one that's super, super easy, but it's incredible how many people don't do this, and that is dependability. The ability to consistently show up on time and do what you say you are going to do is incredibly important. Now, the labor market in the United States is a really complicated and messed up situation, and I've made other videos about why I sort of understand why people don't really give a crap about their jobs. And to be honest, many companies kind of treat their employees like crap, so I'm not all that surprised when the employees reciprocate. But with that being said, if you are with a company that isn't treating you right, I highly recommend you try to move to a company that is going to treat you the right way. And one of the main reasons for that is because you don't want to develop the habit of being undependable. Because when you do get that dream job, when you do work for that company that treats you right and gives you good benefits, et cetera, you don't wanna have nasty habits like being undependable. So this is really easy. It's basically show up on time, show up when you're supposed to show up, don't call in sick if you're not actually sick. And if you say you're going to do something, actually do it. So if you get a task, for instance, and you're not supposed to do it for the next week, make sure you write it down so that you actually remember it. Number five on the list is a little bit more difficult to explain. It's a little abstract, but I like to call it systems thinking. And this is basically where you understand why you're doing something not just how you're supposed to do it. And this also involves understanding other people's jobs within the company. And so instead of just focusing on doing your job correctly and getting accolades for being good at your job, you focus more on the entire outcome of whatever the company is trying to accomplish. There are many examples in companies of people who are very good and very competent at their job, but they don't really care about the success of the company itself. So what they care about is how much they get paid, you know, their personal accolades, but they don't really care about the final product of the success of the company. And unfortunately, especially at certain companies, if you think in the short term, this is a good strategy. But in the long term, it's probably not gonna help you because it's not going to serve and help the company. And if the company doesn't do very well, they're probably not gonna be able to pay you more, and they're probably also not going to be able to give you the advancements that you want in the future. And number six on the list is going to be probably the least important, surprisingly, but it's still important and it really does depend on the industry and the career you're in, and that is the technical skills needed for the job itself. Now, some people think that they can just do number six, right? So if they're a programmer, all they need to know how to do is program. And that will probably get you a job if you're really good at programming, but if you want to get a better job or you want to become a manager or you wanna get paid really well, these other five that I talked about are probably gonna be even more important than the technical skills themselves. Now, I included a bonus one and this one is kind of optional, but if you have this one, you can basically just like write your own paycheck because the only people that usually have this skill are entrepreneurs themselves, people who start companies, maybe CEOs. And honestly, a lot of CEOs don't even have this skill. And that is the ability to anticipate problems before they happen. So I'll give you an example of this one. A good friend of mine used to work for this really well-known spinal surgeon in Las Vegas. This guy's like a world-renowned spinal surgeon. And he had this lady who worked with him who basically took care of all of the business stuff, right? So she took care of the scheduling, the day-to-day -day operations, just everything for him. And she would constantly anticipate problems that were going to pop up before they actually happened. And when the problems happened, when they popped up in real time, she would have a solution ready. And this spinal surgeon made millions of dollars. And even though this lady wasn't educated, she only had a high school education, she didn't even have a degree, she made hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars a year because she basically anticipated problems that popped up. So she was incredibly valuable to this spinal surgeon and she knew it. Check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you. Go ahead, gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. Video and I will see you next time.